while many viewers might know of the SR-71 Blackbird, few know about its rival secret project, the Convair Kingfish, a spy plane that could fly at Mach 3.2 at over 90,000 feet. Convair was working on designs that could fly faster and higher than the Blackbird, beat anything that the Russians threw at it, and could even be used to deploy then undeveloped supersonic nuclear weapons. Let's jump into this Black Ops Never Built project. The SR-71 Blackbird has been hailed as an incredible machine that changed the world of international strategic reconnaissance forever. Operating deep behind enemy lines, this aircraft didn't have to worry about being shot down. It simply accelerated away from the threat at Mach 3.2 and at 85,000 feet until it reached friendly airspace. But this legendary error almost didn't happen and back in the late 50s, the flip of a coin could have given us a very different aircraft indeed. Our story begins in 1956 with the very first deployment of the Lockheed U-2 spy plane. This aircraft would be able to fly over the Soviet territory as well as China, Vietnam and Cuba, taking photos and revealing military movements. Because the aircraft flew so high and so fast, it would be invisible to radar. Well, kind of. It turns out that while the U-2 plane was invisible to American radar, it was appearing on the better Soviet counterpart. The Russians started to monitor this plane in real time, and the US government realized that their project was over merely six months after overflights began. Thus, that very same year, the US started to look for an entirely new aircraft to replace the U-2 mission over Soviet airspace and truly be invisible to radar. A year later in 1957, there was a breakthrough in research when it was found that supersonic aircraft would be impossible to track on radar machines. Because the dot or blip would move so fast across the screen that any operator would simply think it was static noise. Aerospace giants at the time knew that the military was looking for a new spy plane and had started to submit proposals. These designs included a new one from Lockheed called the Archangel 1, which would fly at Mach 3 for long periods of time and confuse radars, although it still had a large radar cross-section and would be visible. The Navy introduced a rubber glider that would be deployed by balloon from a submarine up to the right altitude before moving on with rockets. This design was dead as soon as it was revealed that the balloon would need to be a mile wide. And our hero of the story, Convair, offered a parasitic aircraft called the Super Hustler. Originally, Convair had been flirting with different ideas to make their B-58 Hustler bomber fly faster, including attaching rockets under the plane. So instead of a speed booster, why not carry a rocket with a camera and a pilot on board instead? They came up with a tandem wing configuration. The front stage dubbed the baby with a camera and a single pilot with one ramjet. And there would also be an expendable stage called the Big Brother with two ramjets and a nuclear warhead. But I'll get to that in a moment. This concept could not only be launched from the B-58 Hustler, but also launched from the ground. For the air launch, the plane would be brought up to Mach 2 at 35,000 feet before being released under its own power. It would ignite three ramjets to speed up, releasing the booster as it got pushed forward. This booster section could also then be used as a weapon with a nuclear payload. By 1958, a committee had been formed called Project Gusto to choose one of these many designs. Convair had simplified the design and reduced it to a single aircraft called the First Invisible Super Hustler, or FISH. This single-stage parasitic plane, once deployed, would hit a cruise speed of Mach 4 at 75,000 feet before climbing up to 90,000 feet for active operations. B-58 
Because it would be moving so fast and have such heat hitting the front of the plane, it would use space age materials like ceramics on its leading edges and a honeycomb structure of stainless steel inside. When it finished its mission, it would slow down when in friendly airspace and deploy two normal jet engines for subsonic flight. The total program cost an estimated $205 million in 1958 dollars, and these costs did not include a dedicated B-58 aircraft which was needed for the program. The committee, when reviewing this design, ran into a few issues. For one, this launching aircraft, the B-58, was cancelled in 1959, and it was unlikely that a suitable replacement aircraft could be found. The Air Force was unwilling to part with its existing bomber fleet, and it was too expensive to develop a standalone launch aircraft just for this spy plane. Plus, there were now questions range about the complexity of this multi-stage aircraft design and how the pilots would eject when connected to the bigger plane. The government asked Convair and Lockheed to return again with new designs, one that took into account these flaws and would use the newly developed Pratt & Whitney J-58 turbo ramjet. For Lockheed, this involved making their aircraft have a narrower cross-section for radar, but for Convair, it would mean an entirely new aircraft. Convair would return with a non-parasitic airframe called the Kingfish. At 73 feet long and a wingspan of 60 feet, it is a rather unique looking aircraft. This plane would have two turbo ramjets hidden in the rear of the fuselage and would be able to fly up to Mach 3.2. This is slower than the original parasitic fish aircraft, but would have a longer range. When put head to head with the A-12, the Lockheed option was found to have a longer range, higher altitude, and a lower cost. Convair was also passed over because unlike Lockheed's excellent proven track record with the U-2, a secret under budget project, Convair had blown out its budget with the B-58 and lacked a secure research and development facility like the Lockheed Skunk Works. The A-12 would go on to be built and would evolve into the Blackbird SR-71. And as they say, the rest is history. Ironically, the whole plan to trick the radar operators by moving too fast ended up not working at all. The long exhaust trails of the supersonic spy planes reflected radar scans just as well as the actual aircraft and were easily seen over the radar static. Plus, future developments of radar systems made this strategy totally obsolete in less than a decade. The SR-71 would end up relying on other advantages to perform its role. And as for the Kingfish, further studies were performed and surprisingly, some to create a new version that could fly up to Mach 9. However, the invention of spy satellite technology made any future development moot. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this fascinating journey of the fish in the Kingfish and what could have been. This video merely scratches the surface of the many designs that the brilliant engineers came up with way back then, and I have included a few links to other sources like Aerospace Projects Review that you can read to find out so much more. And if you enjoyed this video today, then I highly suggest you check out our Patreon, where we are offering videos early and behind the scenes and access to yours truly. Link is in the description, and thanks for watching.